Each week, we welcome to our NFG stage one of our highly talented members or special guests with something designed to help you and your business. Our next guest is a specialist in losing things. His professional journey started in 2003 when he graduated in business admin in Bristol with a clear business vision to bring him to where he is today. Like many of us, he's self-employed and juggles the challenges of life and the challenges that lockdown has brought to our businesses, as well as the challenge of a young family. And somehow he seems to do it with comparative finesse. Although his history includes working with professional athletes in powerlifting, bodybuilding, MMA and boxing, most of his client facing time is spent focused on small business owners who have developed bad habits and neglected themselves to seemingly integrate improvements in both diet, exercise and self-care with the added benefit to improve their mind and concentration in their business. By passionately understanding the needs of self-employed business owners who would like to look and feel better, but really struggle fitting it all in, he's made this his core target market and even adapted his business through lockdown to work with clients virtually everywhere, in addition to co-owning the biggest independent gym in Southwest. As a former champion bodybuilder himself, he's clearly maintained his physical levels and practices what he preaches as a podcaster and public speaker too, helping many of his clients lose fat and become leaner in their body while broader in their mind. Answering the question why most people never achieve their health and fitness goals, we bring to you Tom Blackman. Good morning, Tom. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna to have to get a transcript of that. That was, that was better than my website. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for having me here today. Um, I know a few of you from the Dent Programme and around, um, and some of you might have seen me on um, Instagram or YouTube or whatever, because I'm quite active there. Um, I'm here today to uh, give maybe you a little bit of help starting uh, improving your health or fitness. Um, I won't do the introduction because that's been covered so much better than I could do it. Um, but my main business is working with uh, business owners. I, I used to work with the uh, professional athletes, but because I'm a business owner myself and, um, and I have a young family, um, I, I align better with people who are business owners and have young families and are juggling all these different stresses in life. Now, um, my, I have an issue with the people on the internet selling uh, diets that are so um, that you can't do them, you can't finish them because they're so restrictive and they don't understand the uh, the issues that you have with a with a family and uh, and trying to run a business. There's no way business owners can get to the gym six or seven days a week to do an hour and a half of weights. You know, I can't even do that, and I own a gym. So what I what I do is work to allow people to improve their health and fitness as much as they can do and I work on what is achievable not is what optimal um, and that way people can improve their fitness and get a better body. Um, my book which is uh, Target Lean has the tagline how to get the body you want by eating foods you like and that basically sums up everything I do. I don't do restrictive diets, I help people eat the foods they like and transform their body. So as um, uh, has already been said, the, the topic of today is um, how, how to start any sort of health and fitness journey or transformation, because the problem I find with people when they come to work with me is that um, they have these ideas about, I want to lose 30 kilos, I want to get fitter, I want to get stronger, whatever they want to do, they want to fit in their bikini for holiday, they want to um, lose weight for a Christmas party, those sorts of things. But this, this end goal is such, such a long way away and it seems such a like a Mount Everest to climb and they're not sure where to start. And this is, this is where they fall into what I call the diet trap of people. They go, oh, they want to get this hit, this situation fast. So what they then do is go onto a restrictive diet with the blinkers on, trying to get that way. They lose some weight, but generally have a bad relationship with food and rebound afterwards. So my target today is to get you to think about the smallest thing you can do to start you on that way. Because if you can get one thing started, you can compound on it and build and build and build. And I'm presuming everyone here does own their own business. We didn't all start out unless we're millionaires with a huge business with loads of staff and loads of capital to throw at everything. Um, I myself started my, my gym with very little in my pocket and now it's grown over 10 years. And that's exactly the way you need to look at it with your body. 
and with your health and fitness goals. So not sure where to start, end up doing quick fixes. How do we, how do we stop that? Whatever goal it is you've got, there's gonna be a breakdown from that. So for example, if it's lose 30 kilos, we don't think about how to lose 30 kilos because that's so far away. You break it down as how can we lose a kilo? How can we lose half a kilo? And actually that's, that's without going into the science behind it and all that boring stuff, it's actually quite easy to lose a little bit of weight if we were to say restrict one thing we ate today. And something I do with clients, which is it's actually a free video on my YouTube if you wanna go and watch it, it's about, the, it's about the star chart. And what my people who do my free challenges do is they go, I'm gonna restrict three small things a day. Now we're talking about meals, talking about we'll restrict one biscuit, that's a star. We'll eat half a packet of crisps, that's another star. If we go to the pub, we'll have uh, a light beer or something lower calorie than say Guinness or whatever. Those are things you can start off and they will restrict calories very slightly so that if you do everything else the same in your life, you've actually restricted your intake. And that over time will start to drop calories off and you, you will start to lose weight. If everything else is the same in your, in your day, you'll start to lose weight that way. The other thing to think about is that people who want to go to the gym. And I had a, a client years ago, um, he wanted to start going to the gym. He was very, very overweight. His goal was to get to, um, he would want to get his Christmas party without having to sort of tie his shirt together because it was almost bursting out the, the year before. And he wanted to go to the gym, but he wasn't sure where to start. So what, what I said to him, to, if you go to the gym for say five minutes, now that's not going to do anything. You're not going to accomplish anything in five minutes. But the main issue with people trying to incorporate a gym or exercise into their life is that we're all so busy. We think, well, how can I incorporate an hour out of my day to go to the gym and, and do this workout? And where do I start when I get there? And when you go to the gym, it's a very, oh, all these new people here, all these machines, what do I do? How do I start? So the solution was, and this was his exact thoughts, was how do I start? And I said, well, just go to the gym for five minutes every day. And all he did was go to the gym. He spoke to the people on the counter and said, look, I want to join the gym, but you know, it's all right if I just sit down for five minutes. And that's all he did for the first week. He diverted his day so he could go to the gym for five minutes. Sat there for five minutes and then went home. Then the next week, he started thinking about 10 minutes. So he went to the gym for 10 minutes. He had a coffee while he was there, chatted to the staff or whatever. And over the course of, see where this is going, over the course of a month, he built up to, after the third week, he went on the treadmill for like five minutes. The idea was, is that he was trying to break down those barriers to get into the exercise, to get into the gym, because no one at the gym knew him. But after a month of seeing him in reception, sat there having his coffee and then doing a bit on the, on the treadmill, so people started to understand who he was and started to know who he was and started to say hello and everything else. And he started to be accepted in the community. And that's a really important thing about starting any sort of fitness journey is getting accepted into that community. But if he tried to go for like 40 minutes right at the beginning, that wouldn't have worked. And trying to do it five days a week, that wouldn't have worked. And now he trains, I think it's five or six days a week, 40 minutes. He even told me the other day he was going to do like a triathlon. I mean, I would never do a triathlon. But that's what he's built up to from that five minutes every day. So if, if you want to build up this goal, if you've got this goal you want to get to, what you want to think about is a SMART objective. And I'm assuming a lot of us know what SMART objective is because we sort of talk about it in business speak, but it's having a goal which is specific, measured, achievable, relevant, and then timed. And so the five minutes in the gym was a SMART goal because it was all of those things. And it's also relevant to the goal. The end goal was to get to 40 minutes, five days a week, training in the gym. So that was relevant to his goal. So when you go to your, um, I think there's a breakout room in a minute, as if I understand correctly, the, the, the goal there is to think about what do you want to achieve with your health and fitness, with your diet, with anything you want to improve in your healthier lifestyle to create a healthier lifestyle, because we can all be healthier. If there's just one thing you want to get to, how can you work back all the way to all those steps to get there and what's the one thing you could do, which only takes five minutes per day to work towards that goal. And it's, the, it's that 1% every single day that will start you off on those healthy habits. And you'd be surprised how quickly that snowballs into other things. Because the guy I was talking about who went to the gym, 
He was also doing a nutrition plan and everything else. All those healthy decisions, which I call votes for a healthier life, all the votes he was making mean, meant his identity was changing towards someone who was not 30 kilos overweight. And he was now a person who has who's lost, say, 20, 30 kilos, and he's lost even more since then. But he's now living an, a new identity. And that's what we want to try and shift towards this new identity of trying to think, well, where do I want to be? What sort of person do I want to be? And what decisions does that person make? Say, a quick analogy is, if you want to lose some weight, do you walk up the stairs or do you take the elevator? That's a decision which has a consequence because you, build, you burn more calories going up the stairs. Now, if you're in the Empire State Building, that's probably not a good look decision, but there are those decisions you can make every day, which will be a leaner, healthier, fitter person would make this decision. And that's the sort of little things that I encourage everybody I work with to think about. It's not just, oh, I'll, I'll just cut out calories and I'll exercise more. It's about the decision and the behavior that you, um, that you make in order to move you towards that goal. What I do in my, in my coaching group is that every, every uh, week we have what's called an announcement of intention. And the announcement of intention is it's all like having all these goals that you're going you're gonna to do. But unless you announce it and keep yourself accountable to that, it, it, it won't happen. Because we're, we're very easy for us to say to ourselves, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. And yeah, we don't do it. Or yeah, I'll have that Snickers bar and not have it tomorrow because we never do that. So in my, in my coaching group, every Monday, they all post their announcement of intention, which is this week, I am going to do this. It's not like business goals for the week, but it's your body goals for the week. And it's, and it's not, I'm going to eat healthier. I'm going to train a bit harder. It's, I am going to eat X amount of protein a day. I am going to go to the gym for 40 minutes on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at the time as well. Because the more you detail those things you're going to do, the more it becomes ingrained into your mind, you're actually going to do them. If you say, oh, I'm going to go to gym more this week, well, you've got a whole week to make that happen. But if you say, I'm going to go to gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for 30 minutes at 5.30, it then becomes an appointment in your diary, which you then can keep. And actually, all the guys I work with, they put it into their diary, they put their training times into their diary, and sometimes even their eating times, because if you're busy, you always forget to eat, and then that becomes the, I haven't eaten in four hours, right, straight off to Greg's. That's what happens with most people.